I don't normally quote Paul Keating, but he was dead right when he said, you change the government, you change the country. During the campaign we've just had, Anthony Albanese was at pains to stress he didn't much want to change anything other than the Prime Minister. We're a great country, he kept saying, but let down by a bad government. He wanted us to think that he was safe change. But now he's there, quite a lot is going to change. There'll be an ambassador for First Nations peoples, which doesn't make any diplomatic sense to me, given the job of an ambassador is to represent Australia, not just one racial group of us. Labor's climate change policies, well, they'll inevitably be much more intrusive than promised. A de facto carbon tax on the so-called biggest polluters, 200 plus companies that employ thousands at a time when we know we've got economic headwinds ahead. And not only will a top priority be constitutionally entrenching an Indigenous voice, even though it looks like there'll be at least 10 MPs in the new parliament who all identify as Indigenous, so that's your real voice there and it's freely elected. But there's also going to be a move to make us a republic, despite all the pre-election talk that this wasn't top of mind. Now, of course it was, always was. It's enshrined in Labor's party platform. More fool naive voters who took Labor at their word. Today, the former shadow minister for a republic, Labor MP Matt Thistlesuede, told The Australian that the new government was committed, he said, to having a discussion with the public about moving towards having an Australian head of state. Even though, of course, our own High Court declared more than 100 years ago that it was the Governor-General who was effectively our head of state. And in the words of a former High Court judge, Michael Kirby, he says we've already what amounts to a crowned republic, fully democratic, fully independent, but with a small part of our system above and beyond the partisan fray. Thistlethwaite, who's presumably going to be a minister for a republic once the factions decide who's in Albanese's ministry, well, he said that the big question for the government was whether to go straight to a constitutional referendum on dumping the Queen or first have some sort of plebiscite on whether to become a republic and only after that's been passed decide what sort of a republic we want to be. Now, how could we decide whether to become a republic without knowing first exactly what the republic is going to look like. This plebiscite first approach would actually be a sneak attack on our constitution. The risk would be that the plebiscite passed, delegitimizing the constitution we have, but without any agreement on the alternative. Not a good outcome, especially as the constitution we have has helped give us a country which, for all its shortcomings, is as free, as fair, and as prosperous as any on earth. Now, the left likes to tell us that our politics is broken. That's wrong. Our political parties should lift their game, and our political leadership, sure, could do better. But it's our political culture that's been the main problem, not our constitutional arrangements. Indeed, I hate to think where we might have been without them. When Malcolm Turnbull tried to cling to office and had a good crack at bullying the then Attorney General Christian Porter, who with great courage held Turnbull to the Constitution. Now at that time, had it gone further, we could have had great confidence in our Governor General, who wasn't there for any other purpose than to uphold the Constitution and protect the national interest. Imagine if the GG was replaced with a president, perhaps one elected by a popular vote, who would see that terminal example I've just given you through the prism of what it might do to his or her re-election bid rather than the national interest. That's what's really at stake. I don't know about you, but the last thing we need is more self-interested political layers in our system. I reckon we're already over-governed as it is. I think the next few years are going to be a bit of a wild ride, however competent the new government might turn out to be. My panel will have a lot more to say on the economy, with interest rate pain ahead and power prices set to soar, partly because of climate policies. 
and the strategic situation still pretty ominous despite Ukraine's heroic resistance to the Russian dictator. Greg Sheridan will have more on that and China's moves to dominate our Pacific backyard. As we learned today, their push is much more extensive than just the Solomon Islands. Now, with all this going on, why on earth would we throw constitutional change into the mix? Divisive debates about a race-based new voice of the parliament, that's bad enough, but upending a system that served our country well for over a century, I reckon that's madness. The dishonesty of Labor in the election campaign is now writ large. They were never a small target. They just didn't tell us the truth before we voted.